Hi, my name is Tim Burney. I'm a fellowship trained orthopedic spinal surgeon in practice at Western Orthopedics. I primarily treat degenerative conditions of the lumbar and cervical spines, including surgery for lumbar disc herniations. A disc herniation describes an abnormality of the cartilaginous discs which serve as one type of joint between the vertebra of the spine. In the center of every disc is a well-hydrated gelatinous center called the nucleus pulposus. It functions biomechanically similar to a soft ball bearing and axis of movement between the vertebra. One type of problem that can arise with an intervertebral disc is the migration of the disc nucleus backwards into the spinal canal where the spinal nerve roots reside. The pressure of the herniated nucleus causes compression of the nerve root which in turn causes nerve pain in the lower extremity. If an individual fails to heal a disc herniation with non-operative treatment, a microdiscectomy can be performed, that is removal of the herniation through a small incision with the use of an operating microscope. At the time of the operation, the surgeon will find the disc herniation protruding behind the wall of the disc, a fibrous sheath called the annulus, or in the case of a ruptured disc, the nucleus has popped through a hole in the annulus. In the first case, the surgeon must make a slit in the annulus to remove the herniation. In the case of a ruptured disc, the hole is already there. Although the success rates regarding relief of leg pain are 90% or better with this surgery, the patient does have a risk of herniating the same disc again. Depending on what literature one reads, the risk of recurrent herniation ranges from about 5 to 25%. The risk is also proportional to the size of the hole in the annulus created by the surgeon or found at the time of surgery. In the past, spine surgeons had no good technology to impact this risk of recurrent herniation. In the last few years, however, a spine company developed a product that allowed easy suturing of the annular opening. Called the X-Close and VersaClose tissue repair systems, this technology involves the use of a preloaded and pre-tied suture with tissue anchors deployed through the needle tip cannula. Candidates for this procedure include all patients with a lumbar disc herniation, with the exception of situations where the damage to the annulus is too severe to hold a suture. In all my patients undergoing microdiscectomy in the last few years, I've had only three individuals who've had recurrent herniations using this system. The journal Spine published a 2013 prospective randomized controlled trial of 750 patients undergoing discectomy in which 478 were treated with this tissue repair system and 250 with no annular repair. At three months postoperatively, there was an 83% reduction in recurrent herniations in the group treated with annular repair compared to the control group, a 71% reduction at six months, and a 45% reduction at two years follow-up. As a result, this technology of annular repair has been a beneficial addition to my surgical approach to the treatment of lumbar disc herniations with improved patient outcomes. Thank you for listening. And if you have further questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to check us out at our website, western-ortho.com. Thank you.